learning. I look at it being a little bit like paper mache, where we get a new skill, one of these, and we need to attach it to something that students already know, like our balloon here. Now, if we do a really good job of making sure that students can see the skill in a range of different contexts, then we put lots of glue on our new skill and we can attach it nice and easily like that. But let's just say we only briefly touch on the surface and we just put a little bit of glue here. What happens is it doesn't quite stick properly. And then we get another skill and we attach it here like this. Once again, it doesn't quite stick and eventually things come undone just like what you've seen there. So when students really do understand conceptually what's going on because we've attached the skill in many different ways, well then they're more likely to simply remember it so that they can then build on that in the future. Let me show you how I apply this when teaching long division straight after the intro. Hi, my name's Tom Moore, and in this video, we're going to use an understanding that many students already have in order to teach long division. Now, when teaching division in the past, I always found that many students were quite nervous about this and struggled at times as well. I find this quite peculiar actually because if you were to say have a bag of M&Ms and pour them into four different bowls, many students would be able to tell you very quickly whether or not they've actually been shared evenly. And you'd be able to know this because they'd all be racing to the bowl of M&Ms that had the most in it. Now it's this understanding of sharing evenly that we're going to call upon when teaching long division. I'll show you how. Let's say that I wanted to divide 532 by 4. How would that look? Well, I'm going to grab 500, so that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 3 tens, and 2 ones. And I want to divide that by 4. When doing this, I'm going to start off with the hundreds. So I'm going to break that up into four groups. 1, 2, 3, 4. And now I have a slight issue, don't I? Because this one, I, can't, I actually cannot break it up to make it evenly spread between the four groups. So what I've just done here is I've figured out, well, each group is going to get one 100. I then am no longer thinking about 400 altogether because I've taken that out of the picture pretty much. So that has left me with 132. Well, what am I gonna do now? Well, I'm going to change one of these or trade one of these for 10 of these. So I'll get 10. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. And now I will be able to break these ones up and share them evenly. So let's do that. I'll put probably 2 here, 2 here, 2 here, 2 here. Okay, I can still put another one at least. 1, 2, 3, 4. Ah, but I can't break that one up again, can I? But what I do now have is I know that each group now gets 3 tens. So if each group gets three tens, well, I've dealt with 120 of these. So I can take that out of the picture, which leaves me with, of course, 12. What am I gonna do? Well, we know I'm gonna break this up or I'm gonna trade this for 10 of these. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Now that I've done that, can I break that up evenly? Well, let's have a look. I'll go three in this one, three in this one, three in this one, haha, -ha. and three in this one. So that means that every group gets three ones. And I've taken 12 out of the picture, which means that I have a remainder of zero. So there you have it. I've just shown you how to go through and do long division using MAB and how the actual algorithm works as well. It's funny really, and I don't know about you, but before I stumbled across how to demonstrate this using MAB, I actually never really understood what was actually occurring in the algorithm. Maybe you did, maybe you didn't too, I'm not sure. But what I find is that by getting students to simply go through and share out the MAB a number of times first, that is before we even bring in this, so we just leave that to the side and we just get them to share the MAB, well then that will actually get them to go through the process of renaming 10 of these for one of those, that is changing a 100 for 10 10s or changing a 10 for 10 ones. And by going through and doing that a number of times, they'll then understand well what the actual process is that's occurring. 
Then the next step is to say, well, can you actually maybe write down what's happening? Could you show me what you're actually doing by just writing down whatever you're thinking at the time? And once they've done that a number of times, then what you could do is bring in the algorithm and say, well, how does what you've just written down relate to what I've got here? Now you can see by doing this that students first of all start off with something concrete and then they come up with something that works for them and they're explaining it in their own way before bringing in the formal algorithm. So you're attaching this skill in many different ways and getting them to really evaluate what they're doing in comparison to what we want them to end up doing in the end. So it's this process of actually coming up with their own way of doing it and then reflecting on this and applying it to what they are now trying to learn that will really cement this skill to something that they can now learn and remember going into the future. Now, don't forget to like and comment, and if you know a teacher who could use this activity within their class, make sure you tag them in the comments below. Also, if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe so you can stay up to date with all of the videos that we're sending out for Mass Pathway. My name's Tom Moore, we'll see you next time.